I'd like to show you a beautiful experiment that's really easy to do. Just arrange a few candies in a pattern on a white styrofoam plate. Next, pour in some water and watch what happens. Wow, look at that! The colors spread out and make a pattern that's really interesting. Let's zoom in for a closer look. I want to show you something remarkable about this experiment. Notice that the colors don't seem to mix, but rather stay in their own area. It even looks as though there are sharply defined lines that divide each region of color. I wonder why this happens. Let's do some experiments to find out. First, let's repeat the experiment, but this time let's only use one color and place them all in the same region. Well, just like before, the colorful dye from the candy spreads out into the water. It's also the case that sugar from the candy is spreading out into the water and dissolving to form sugar water. Unfortunately, dissolved sugar is invisible, so we can't see it. However, we can track what's going on with the sugar water because it travels along with the dyes. But hey, look! In this case, the brown dye continues to spread throughout the whole plate. It doesn't appear as though there's anything stopping the dye from spreading. And I don't see any sharply defined lines. Let's try to remember this result as we do other experiments. This time, let's place different colored candies on opposite ends of the plate. Now I'll add some water. All right, let's watch what happens. Once again, the material spreads through the water, but this time it appears that each color remains in its own area. There is also that sharp line of division that separates the two colors. I wonder if it's the sugar from the candy that contributes to the formation of the sharp line. I think we can actually test this in the following way. I'll do the experiment with candy on one side of the plate and a sugar cube with no color, of course, on the opposite side of the plate. Okay, now I'll add some water. Wow, in this case, the dye doesn't spread throughout the whole plate. The sugar appears to be blocking it. Remember when we used candies on one side of the plate, but no sugar on the other? The material dispersed all throughout the water. But with sugar on the other side of the plate, the sugar appears to be blocking the material from spreading throughout the water. And you know what? I even see that sharp dividing line. Let's try this experiment using an aquarium filled with water rather than a flat plate. I'm curious to see if sugar from the candy causes a sinking effect that's too hard to see when we use the plate. To set up the experiment, I'll cut open this tea bag, empty it, and then fill it with some M&Ms. Then I'll tape it shut. I'll prepare two bags with red M&Ms and two bags with blue M&Ms in this way. Almost done. One more bag. All right, we're ready for the experiment. Now I'll submerge the tea bags beneath the surface of the water in this aquarium. The tea bags with the red M&Ms will go on the right, and the tea bags with the blue M&Ms will go on the left. Okay, let's watch to see what transpires. Look, the dyes are dissolving in the water, and they're sinking. Sugar from the candy is also dissolving into the water. Remember, we can track what's going on with the sugar water that forms because it travels along with the dyes. So both the sugar water and the dyes sink together. The sinking of the sugar water makes sense because sugar water has a higher density than pure water. Because of its higher density, sugar water sinks in pure water, much like a rock sinks in water. Notice that the dispersion of material doesn't continue as freely once the red and blue regions meet each other. Both colored regions of dye are at the bottom of the container so they don't sink any further. Also, because both regions are high density sugar water, they can't easily sink below the other packet of colored water. Both colored regions of water have nowhere to go and the mixing stops. Because of this, we can now see a fairly sharp division between the two regions of water, the clear dividing line. Let's zoom in and take an even closer look. Can you see that the red sugar water has sunken beneath the blue sugar water? It must be the case that the region of red sugar water has a somewhat higher density than the sugar water that contains the blue dye. Isn't that neat? It sure looks like differences in densities between water and the different regions of colored water keep the various regions from mixing. I think this is a good explanation for the sharp edges that we saw in the original experiment. 
Unfortunately, it's hard to see the colored sugar water sinking onto the flat plate because the original experiment is observed from the top and the water is too shallow. Nevertheless, the different colored, sharply defined regions probably result as sugar and dyes from the candy dissolve into the water, sink onto the plate, and spread out until they meet another region of colored water. Then the mixing stops, forming the sharp regions. I hope you enjoyed learning about this experiment and how the concept of density contributes to the beautiful patterns that arise. In closing, I thought you might enjoy seeing a particularly beautiful pattern that I created when setting up experiments for this video. You should try this experiment on your own. Do you think using hot water or cold water will cause the spreading to happen more quickly? How do you think using hot water or cold water might affect the sharpness of the divisions formed? What other investigations can you think of? Happy experimenting!